This is how I want you all to sit in the kingdom of God as I am sitting today. <clears throat> we have to realize that we are now the part and parcel of that cosmic consciousness itself. The Brahma. The one that creates, which coordinates, which plans into all the details and the one that loves through its creation, through its expression, is that cosmic consciousness. We are not only in it, but we can handle it. We can regulate it. We can use it. We can work it out. This is the state when we are in, we are the Guru. Guru means a thing which is higher than the gravity of the earth or stronger than the gravity of the earth. What is the gravity of the earth? Superficially, when we see that, we understand it as a thing that acts on our body to keep us on the ground. Also there is a load of a big atmosphere on our head, of many elephants standing on our head plus the Mother Earth has the gravity to pull us towards herself. That's on the gross level, we understand the gravity. And on the gross level also we sometimes understand the Guru principle. On the gross level we think a good Guru is that person who just attracts you towards himself. Bodily attraction. Or maybe <coughs> other attractions. which are gross. And that's why people always go to the gurus who are false, who are superficial. But the one who is above the gravity of the Mother Earth, the gross, the subtle, the subtle, subtler and the subtlest. Beyond all these attractions, that is the one, is the Guru. So, in the very gross way we see that normally people are attracted 
towards other through the body element. The gravity acting through the body. A guru who looks like a cinema actor was very much appreciated. They cannot see the totality of beauty, but just one aspect. The earlier gurus who came as false gurus used to paint their faces even in India. Or they would go to special decorators who would make their hair look like Shankara's jatas and eyes were painted with big black coal up to this and the whole body was covered with funny type of a powder or they would wear a kashaya a cloth that was given a color of saffron without using the saffron. In two rupees you can get that. And people would be attracted towards such a person. They would carry an elephant to sit on an elephant, even to add to the propensity of the superficial gravity and walk on the streets and people would bow to them and give them whatever they wanted. This cannot elevate anyone. Any body attraction can enslave you, cannot give you freedom. It will give you habits for your body enslavement and also it will enslave you to your Guru. If he knows how to keep attractive in various ways. The whole understanding of the cosmic consciousness can be put in one little sentence that it cannot be attracted by the gravity of any stars, earth, moon or sun. The other attractions one has from the Mother Earth are all for food, greed, lust, materialism at its worst. It comes from matter. All that comes from matter, once you start getting used to it, you become a slave and not a guru. So the first attempt should be for anybody to be a good guru is to get over material attraction. 
in a subtler way we can see it happens like this a lady or a gentleman buys an ashram in search of and the search of is start living in that ashram the owner of that house starts worrying about the house and all material things in that house rather than the emancipation of the disciples or the search of his father the whole attention is towards the material upkeep of the house and not towards the emancipation of the search of his who are supposed to rise into the cosmic consciousness and such a person if he starts believing that he is the guru or in any way even a sahajogi he is sadly mistaken where is your attention is the point if you are the guru where is your attention if your attention is on the correction and the nourishment of yourself and of others then you are first of all the sajogi and once you rise about the gravitational force of materialism then you could be called as the guru anything that is living has a capacity to rise against the gravity up to a point that is limited like we have seen the trees they come out of the mother earth and grow upward up to a limited space every tree every type of tree has its own limitations cedar will be cedar and rose will be a rose is all controlled by the gravitational force but there is one thing which rises against the gravitational force which has no limits and that is your kundalini it cannot be controlled by the gravitational force unless and until you want it to be controlled nothing can control it but you and yourself can control it so as soon as you become in charge of your kundalini you have crossed one step forward that you are you have overcome the force that is the gravitational force then the cycle of all the five elements is bound together all the five elements have to go in a cycle in such a way that nothing is wasted nothing is spoiled everything is organized
but the cycle is broken only by the awakening of the Kundalini. Because you enter into the highest of highest, which is the cosmic consciousness, which you know how to regulate yourself. That cosmic consciousness is the Param Tattva, is the principle of all the principles, controls all the principles, so it controls also the principles of all these five elements. It controls the Manashakti, It controls the evolution and gives you the power to evolve others. First of all, to judge yourself, to be a guru, you have to have a gravity of your own, which is not bound by the gravity of the Mother Earth. That's the minimum of minimum. Which does not mean you wear outside the kashaya, the dress that suggests that you are a sannyas. But from inside you should be a sannyas. Now a sannyasi who is inside a sannyasi We'll have a big bank, bank balance, maybe, but we'll know nothing about it. We'll be very indifferent and any day willing to part with it. A sannyasi has to be a person about lust should not know what is the lust is. What is this attraction of lust is? That through his Kundalini and Muladhara he can achieve it. Because now you have a capacity to rise above the gravity. You have got that power now to rise above this lust business. Where your attention gets absolutely ruined. But in Sahaja Yoga we have everything. Like on Indian streets you will find the most modern car, a Rolls Royce, Mercedes, as well as you can find a bullock cart and also lots of cows and buffaloes, everything there. In the same way I think in Sahaja Yoga we have all kinds. We have some people who are very great. and try to achieve a state of untarnishability, put their attention to it, work it out. But we also have people who are absolutely useless things, just hanging on to Sahaja Yoga to use Sahaja Yoga for their own popularity maybe, for their own gains, I don't know for what. I have seen people who give lectures in the name of Sahaja Yoga and are badly caught up.
there is that gravity acting in you, remember that. The gravity of the Mother Earth, some sort of a gravity, it should be located. But some of them are nothing but worms, they cannot go higher. And the outsiders see those worms only and try to say that Sahaja Yoga is no good. Your Kundalini has the power, it has all the powers to make you the highest of highest. An ordinary grass can become a cedar. There's no limits to it. But you must have confidence in yourself and confidence in Sahaja Yoga. If you don't have confidence in yourself or in Sahaja Yoga, nothing can work it out. But the highest of all is the sincerity which nobody can instill in you. There are so many descriptions of a Guru, how a Sadguru should be. Not in the best, I didn't see that, because I think they never believed in Gurus, but they have lots of Gurus. Guru has to suffer the most. That's how he can command. He has to be the example of austerity and of detachment, that's how he is going to get respect. In Sahaja Yoga nobody is going to respect anybody because that Guru has made so much money out of Sahaja Yogis. But the attention on money itself of Sahaja Yogis, itself is suggestive that they are not Sahaja Yogis. For example, when you wanted to collect money, I mean, I never asked for a house or anything. The idea came from some Sahaja Yogis, there should be a house for me. <laughs> Who can house me? Just think of it. <laughs> Is it possible? Is it possible to house me? Not possible. The Guru has to himself accept all the challenges, everything, to go through it, to work it out, to cleanse himself, to see for himself how far he has reached. He has not just to depend on some certificates of few people, it's not artificiality, it is not falsehood, it is reality. And when you come to reality, you must know that You have to be satisfied about yourself. Then comes the confidence. That's how the authority comes in, that you're sure of yourself that whatever you are doing is the reality. Reality and nothing else. And this power is within you. The Kundalini is within you, she is your own mother. All your life you are wasted in doing all kinds of things. People have gone into lots of penances, doing anti-culture great jobs of ruining themselves and destroying themselves. So why not do it something with complete understanding, meticulously, carefully, why not? With full attention and concentration, 
because the reward is joy. Ultimately, what do we seek is nothing but joy. Rationally, we understand, but not from the heart. It doesn't go in the heart easily. Now people are saying, Mother, open your, my heart. How am I to open it? Just tell me. One has to go for an open heart surgery, I think, the way things are. To open your heart, the Guru has to be generous. Whatever these other Agurus are doing, just the opposite of that. Now, all of you can become Gurus. Every one of you can become Gurus. And can develop that great capacity to be one with that cosmic consciousness, completely out of the clutches of the gravity of the earth, materialism, without achieving that you have no right to tell anybody what is to be done. First, it should be your practice and precept in your own life, in your own example, and then your example is sufficient to convince others. Today, through this understanding that you have to rise about the gravitational force of materialism, which is today's religion everywhere, whatever they may call it, whether it is communism or uh, capitalism or democracy or democracy, whether it is Christianity, Hinduism, Islam or any other nonsense, all of that is nothing but materialism in its all absurd forms. Kundalini is the only thing that can take you like the stalk of the lotus out of this mud of materialism. And that is what one has to achieve, especially in the West. It goes in the subtle and subtler and subtlest forms. So be on the lookout and ultimately it expresses itself as ego. All materialists are egoistical, racist, they are robbers and plunderers. They go to other countries like South Africa and settle down nicely, robbers and plunderers, and extracting the wealth of another. All this can become very sophisticated and beautified. We have to fight that, but to fight that we have to get out of it completely. Otherwise we cannot fight it when we are in it. So all of us should try to get out of it fully. It does not mean that you should all take out your clothes and say that we have given up everything. That's another style it has started now. It means that you respect all that is beautiful, you respect all that is good, but you are not dominated by anything, you are not in the clutches of anything. 
If I want, I can wear a gold chain, otherwise nothing, doesn't bother, I don't care. That should be the attitude, if I have or if I have to, I will. Nothing can dominate me, nothing can give me status. I stand on my own status and on my position, you know, on my authority, because I am that pure consciousness. Nothing can spoil me, nothing can bring me down, nothing can bow me, 